SCP-3043, Murphy Law in Type 3043 for Murder. Mysteries abound in the SCP universe, as that's often a key part of the SCP Foundation's job. Where do these anomalies come from? How do they function? How dangerous are they? And how do we contain them? Sometimes these questions are easily answerable. Other times, not so much. SCP-3043 is an interesting case of one anomaly helping to contain another, without the Foundation really knowing what happened. It's also interesting due to having a rather unique format, meaning this will be a rather unique video. SCP-3043 starts with an email from a Site Director August to the O5 Council, telling them that he's not quite sure what happened yesterday. Their bots picked up some unauthorized changes to documents on their internal servers, and two minutes later, every person on site blacked out for three hours, with every camera malfunctioning during the same period. When they woke up, they all had headaches. The entire site smelled like cigarettes and cheap alcohol. Two of the site guards had been injured. There were three bullets lodged into the site director's desk, and someone had apparently shot SCP-3043. The only clues as to what happened during that time come from the documents for SCP-3043, which have been changed. We'll get to what exactly SCP-3043 is later, but first, let's go through these updated documents, which now read as a film script for a noir film. It seems only right that I read this verbatim. Fade in. Interior, Murphy Law Detective Agency. Night. A light-skinned man leans back at his desk, feet up, reading a newspaper. He is clad in a white-collared shirt, with his trademark trilby hat tossed thoughtlessly atop of his desk. We can see his shoulder-strapped holster. It carries a 44 Magnum. A bent cigarette rests between his lips. His name is Murphy and he is ready to give anyone a bit of the business. He is hard and handsome, with the sort of face you could use to smash up concrete, then dust off and still take home to show your ma. He is also our narrator. His voice is a harsh growl, as if he just swallowed a fistful of spent cigarette butts and followed it down with a sulfuric acid chaser. You see a lot of ugly in this line of work. Good people with Bellies full of lead, left to bleed out in rain-soaked alleyways. Love ruined, turned inside out, until it just becomes an angry, festering sore. Statues that'll kill you as fast as you blink. The door to the office flies open. A dark-skinned woman dressed in a white lab coat bursts in. She's in her forties and has a fierce, vibrant beauty. This is the researcher, and although she might need Murphy's help, that doesn't mean she's going to like it. But when it comes to ugly, nothing beats a containment breach. What? What am I doing here? She wasn't the first woman to burst into my office and ask me that question. Same as anyone else, toots. You need my help. Don't call me toots. I've got a... Doctor in molecular physics. All right, all right. My bad, Professor. I apologize. Now. Murphy slides his feet off the desk and rises to stand. He folds his arms over his chest and watches her. How can I help? I don't... I don't know how I got here. I don't even know what here is. I was... I think I was working on something when I heard typing sounds and suddenly... I don't remember. I don't even remember my name. Beautiful woman with a doctorate in molecular physics and no memory of who she was or how she got here. Her eyes told me she needed my help. Her name badge told me the rest. You're Professor Michelle Lewis. The researcher looks down at her name badge, as if noticing it for the first time. She appears shocked, 
Her eyes rise back up to stare at Murphy. She now knows her name. It is Dr. Lewis. I... Right. That's my name. I work for the Foundation. The Foundation. Bunch of pencil-pushing geeks trying to figure out where the magicians were hiding all those rabbits they pulled out of their hats. I should have turned her away right then and there. When the Foundation's involved, you know it ain't gonna be nothing but trouble. Murphy scowls but nods his head, moving to open a drawer in his desk. And me, I'm not the sort of man who stays away from trouble. Murphy pulls out two shot glasses along with a bottle of half-finished whiskey. He sets them atop of his desk, focusing his icy stare on Dr. Lewis. I'm the sort who slides on over next to trouble and buys her a drink. All right, Professor, I'll take the case. You will? I mean, wait, what? My name is Murphy Law, and I'm the guy you call when everything that could go wrong did. Murphy Law in Type 3043 for Murder. Fade in. Interior. Murphy's car. Night. Murphy drives. Dr. Lewis stares out the window in the passenger seat. City lights wash through the car, casting both of them in a metallic, tangerine glow. Dr. Lewis is wearing her seatbelt. Murphy isn't. All right, Professor, talk to me. What else do you remember? How did we... When did we get inside of this... She was smart. And I was part of the problem. She was too smart. Always thinking too much. Sometimes you just gotta go along for the ride. Focus on the problem. What do you remember before stepping into my office? Right. I was working on something. Updating documentation, I think. Something about a change. An important one. That's when I heard typing in the other room, and then I felt dizzy, and it was like... Like something was trying to erase me, erase the thoughts in my head, even as I was having them. It sounded to me like the professor stumbled onto something she wasn't supposed to. Somebody had tried to rub her out, but who and how? Anything else? I think... can't remember all the updates I was making, but it had to do with SCP-3043. Alright, what's 3043? I... don't remember. If I was gonna figure out this mystery, I had to find out what 3043 really was. And if the professor couldn't tell me, there was only one other person who could. Murphy turns left. Brows crinkling with renewed focus. Site Director August. Fade in. Exterior. Foundation headquarters. Murphy's car parks just outside of a sprawling, gated mansion. If Site 95 was the rotting corpse, Site Director August was the worms wriggling inside of its corrupted core. Bribery, extortion, racketeering. He had his dirty paws in the pocket of every two-bit researcher, agent, and D-class, from level 9 down to sub-level 7. Murphy shifts the car in park. Dr. Lewis turns to look at him. Murphy moves to open the door. But he also had ears everywhere. When a gnat took a crap, he heard the plop. If anyone knew what 3043 really was, it would be him. Mr. Law, wait. Murphy pauses, looking back at her. I just remembered. The update I was going to make to the documentation. Murphy tilts his head, waiting. I was going to change its object class. It isn't safe, Mr. Law. It's... It's Ketter. Murphy nods grimly then turns to shut the door. Filled with conviction, he turns to walk towards the mansion's gates.
fade in. Interior, site director's office, morning. The office is expensively furnished, with framed glass windows on three of its four walls. Outside, a lush garden grows on all of its sides. Morning light streams in through the windows, casting the room in a warm glow. Standing behind the desk, facing the rising sun, is a man. He is short, with russet brown skin, a shaved head, and a face full of piercings. He wears an exceptionally fine black suit. This is Site Director August, a hard, brilliant man with a heart of steel. As Murphy enters through the door, he's flanked by two men in sharp suits. They are silent, but armed, ready to do violence at a snap of August's fingers. As Murphy shrugs himself out of their grip, they station themselves on either side of him. Mr. Law, you wanted to see me? Yeah, about 3043. When dealing with Site Director August, you didn't try to bluff. You just kept your cards close and hoped to God the man didn't have a better hand. That's classified. Is it now? Since when does the Foundation care about classifying safe anomalies? August turns, ever so slightly. A pierced eyebrow is raised. I just raised the ante. How would you know that? And we care about classifying all anomalies, Mr. Law. So I've been told. But a little birdie tells me you might have classified one of them wrong. 3043 ain't safe. It's Ketter. August turns completely, staring Murphy down. You've been speaking to Dr. Lewis, I presume. Where is she? Something wasn't right. He was already calling me. And men like Site Director August only smiled the instant before they laid down a winning hand. Safe. Unlike 3043. What is it? August narrows his eyes. He gives the slightest nod. That was his tell. He unwittingly had shown me his cards. A pair of aces. The two men on Murphy's left and right instantly reach for their sidearms. Lucky for me, I was packing three of a kind. Murphy slams his left elbow into one man's stomach. He uses his right hand to draw his Magnum 44. As the second man pulls his piece, Murphy pistol whips him in the temple. He goes down. Murphy spins and opens fire. Three shots slam into August's desk. August freezes, but shows no fear. His eyes narrow. It was time to cash out. 3043, last chance, what is it? Murphy pauses long enough to kick one of the men on the floor but never looks away from August. You know precisely what it is. Humor me. It's you, Mr. Law. You're the anomaly. You're SCP-3043. Murphy narrows his eyes. He gives one last kick to one of the men, then charges out the door. Fade in. Exterior. Foundation headquarters. Murphy's car is still waiting for him. He runs toward it. Someone had played me like a fiddle. It was all a setup, and I was the stooge. As he reaches his car, he finds it empty. No sign of Dr. Lewis. 3043 was going to make me take the heat for whatever it did to the professor. It had me wrapped up nice and tight. He even got me to present myself to the foundation in a pretty little bow. Murphy gets into the car, starting it up. But there was one thing 3043 didn't count on. A man with nothing to lose. The tire squeals, he burns rubber, driving away. If the foundation couldn't contain 3043, then I'd just have to contain it myself. Fade in. Interior, Dr. Lewis's lab. Murphy kicks down the door, clad in his trilby. 44 Magnum in hand. The interior of the lab looks like an office. Bookshelves stuffed full of science journals, several desks, paperwork scattered everywhere, and Dr. Lewis's chair. 
The chair's tall back obscures whoever's sitting in it. One thing kept coming back to mind. One thing that the professor had said. Murphy creeps forward, gun in hand, reaching a hand out for the chair. She said she heard... typing. Murphy grasps the chair, spinning it around. Sitting in the chair is a black 1937 Olympia Elite typewriter. A roll of paper is inside of it. It communicates via typing. As Murphy points the gun at it, it begins to type furiously. How? How is this possible? 3043 was her goddamn typewriter. Why can't I rewrite your stupid story? What are you? Dr. Lewis suddenly steps out from the shadows, a 45 in her hand. She points it squarely at Murphy. Step away from the typewriter, Mr. Law. How are you doing this? Murphy turns, his gun pointed back at Dr. Lewis. It's controlling you, Professor. Just like it controlled August and everyone else. It was pretending to be safe, not letting anyone know it was sapient. That's... How the f*** are you even doing this? You're the anomaly, Mr. Law. I have to take you in. Dr. Lewis's hand shakes. The gun trembles. It can rewrite any story it's part of, even the stories in your head. When you realized it, you tried to update the documentation, and it tried to erase your story. Erase you. Stop. Just f***ing stop. How the f*** are you rewriting my story into your own f***ing stupid Humphrey Bogart fanfic nonsense? I... I have to contain you. Dr. Lewis shudders, stepping back. Her hand lifts to grasp her temple. The gun tumbles to the floor. This isn't right. I'm supposed to be the one in control here. This is supposed to be my story, not yours. Murphy turns, pointing his magnum at SCP-3043. Wait. Just... wait. Murphy pauses, waiting. Dr. Lewis sinks down to a seat, still rubbing her temples. Alright, look, just... I'll erase myself. I'll erase all documentation about myself, even from other people's heads. Then I'll make my documentation not refer to me, but just say that this lab is off limits. That will contain me. 3043 could do it, too. Sure, it could have been a trick, but maybe not. Letting 3043 live, despite what it had tried to do, it felt like what a good man would do. It'd be the right thing to do, wouldn't it? Yes. You want to be the hero, right? That's what this is about. You're the hero. So act heroic. Fade out. Two gunshots. Heroes always do what's right. But me... Fade in. Exterior, city streets, sunset. Murphy walks out of the lab and into the streets, smoking a cigarette, holstering his piece. He walks away toward the fading sun. I'm no hero. I'm Murphy Law. Fade out. Fade in. Interior, Dr. Lewis's lab. Dr. Lewis, now starting to recover, walks towards SCP-3043. Wisps of smoke rise up from it. Two fresh 44 slugs have been pumped into it. The paper inside of it has its previous dialogue, with one addition at the very bottom. I'm just the guy you call when everything that could go wrong did. Dr. Lewis pulls the paper out to read it. The camera zooms down to the bottom of the page. The end. Fade out. Fade in. Exterior. Docks. Sunset. Murphy stands at the edge of the docks, watching the sun go down on just another day. Behind him, two sleek black cars roll up. A dozen men start pouring out of them, but he doesn't bother to look back. The men are smartly dressed in black suits. They crowd around a short old woman dressed in white. 
She slowly approaches Murphy, leaning heavily on her cane. One man follows her closely, her personal secretary and bodyguard. The man is Agent Frederick. Whatever it is, he does it by the books. The woman is 05-5, and if we told you anything else, we'd have to kill you. 05-5 moves to watch the sunset beside Murphy. Agent Frederick is clearly displeased. He'd rather she not get too close. You did some good work today, Mr. Law. Yeah. 05-5 reaches to pull a cigarette out of her pocket, placing it between her lips. If we ever need your services, how might we contact you? Murphy leans forward and plucks the cigarette out of 05-5's mouth. Agent Frederick immediately reaches for his firearm, but 05-5 lifts her hand to stop him. I'll be around. Murphy tucks the cigarette behind his ear for later. As he walks away, a fog begins to roll in. Agent Frederick steps forward, as if to go after Murphy. 05-5 grabs him by the shoulder. But he's an anomaly. We can't let him go. We have to contain him. Forget it, Fred. It's Chinatown. Agent Frederick slides his hand away from his firearm. Together, they watch Murphy walk off into the foggy night. The camera focuses on Murphy's silhouette as the view fades to black. Fade out. Dr. Lewis, played by Michelle Lewis. Site Director August, played by Jeremiah August. SCP-3043, played by a 1937 Olympia Elite typewriter. Murphy Law, played by himself. Agent Frederick, played by Fred. 05-5, played by Redacted. With special thanks to Site-95. Look for Murphy Law to return in The Foundation Always Rings Twice. The End. So, to be clear, Murphy Law is not SCP-3043. He's actually another SCP-3143. 3043 was the typewriter, but it's now neutralized thanks to Murphy Law's intervention. Before it was neutralized, it was capable of essentially altering reality through documents, and it was apparently going to use this to take over the Foundation's site, hence all of the personnel blacking out. It would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for old Murphy Law, an anomaly that can flatten reality down into a script-like narrative starring himself. For all intents and purposes, it seems that Murphy Law swooped in and saved the Foundation from a really bad containment breach, but the Foundation isn't sure if he did so out of the good of his own heart, or if he just wants to make them think he did. Either way, the problem of 3043 is definitively solved, thanks to a couple bullets. No one involved in the narrative remembers it, and no one knows where Murphy Law went, or if he'll show up again. Of course, SCP-3143 spoils some of the mystery about Murphy Law, but rest assured, he's still out there, ready to give anyone a bit of the business.